A lot of men's grievances are legitimate. They're solid. They're reasonable. But what makes it hard for us to make progress is the fact that men are still willing to reward the behavior that we know is unproductive in the long run. For the chance to sleep with a beautiful woman, we're still willing to tolerate her nonsense. And it's a vicious cycle because if somebody like me or somebody else says, oh, this thing that you're doing is and that your attitude is bad. We don't want no BBLs. We don't want this. We don't want that because it's going to hurt us and her in the long run. Man B is going to come in and tell her everything she wants to hear just so he can sleep with her. She doesn't know the difference, but now she feels like she doesn't actually need to hear the truth because she has 50 guys in her DMs, 100 guys willing to fly her out, and another 50 guys sending, sending random cash apps. And we've talked about it on the channel. I have a video called Down in the DMs where you literally see one of my interviewees, her DMs, random dudes talking about flying her out, talking about doing this, doing that, sending money. And this is the reality for average women so you can only imagine what it is for super attractive women. Wow. If I had time to open up a Farah Athletes dumb fuck consulting firm for all the dumb fucks out there who are athletes. So Travis Rudolph was just found not guilty for the murder of Dominique Jones's brother, I believe, after she called him to Travis's house to, quote, shoot his shit up. Now, this case is interesting for a lot of reasons. For one, the lady in question, Dominique Jones, is currently still married. She was Travis Rudolph's side chick, and she was upset that he wasn't taking her more seriously. I want to deep dive into this because I think there are several things for us to investigate here. And for me, the biggest thing here isn't even necessarily Dominique Jones. I think Dominic Jones is the consequence. She's the, she's the symptom. I don't think she's the disease. For one, like I talked about during the last video, athletes don't really get bitches. <laughs> and I explained what I meant in the last video, but I think the fact that a Travis Rudolph involved himself with a woman like this kind of speaks to what I was saying. To reiterate, a lot of athletes, because of intense training when they're coming up, because of sometimes coming up with single mothers, they don't get experience, like real world, real life experience, having to learn the psychology or the pathology of women because another benefit of being an athlete is that women just come to them, right? So they end up in entanglements with women like Zion Williamson was involved with or is involved with and women like Dominique Jones. But I think something else that we need to talk about is what creates women like this. Because there's a great deal of entitlement, even when you watch the footage of her taking the stand. She was allowed to speak with almost a reckless abandon. There was a bombastic, belligerent tone in her voice. And I touched on how we as a society haven't learned how to prosecute women. We haven't learned how to see women as the as predators and we haven't learned how to see men as victims. And I think part of the reason is because we spend entirely too much time seeing women as commodities. And I think that's part of what creates the entitlement and the disposition that we see from the worst behaving women amongst us. In the last video, I showed an image of Shaquille O'Neal with uh, Brittany Renner. Apparently they were on a pleasant date <laughs> recently. Ironically, before I was about to make this video, I find out the young lady who went viral recently for working at Home Depot, as opposed to leveraging her looks the way that the internet thinks she should, Shaquille O'Neal himself <laughs> slid in her DMs. Is a young lady who's still in college, uh, probably younger than his son and went viral simply because she's too pretty to be working at Home Depot, but seems like she was raised properly and she doesn't think leveraging just looks is sustainable or is good for her, her spirit or her character. And Shaq slides in a DM saying, questionably flirtatious thing at the end, right? And it really speaks to the fact that, like I said, athletes 
for whatever reason, have not gotten to the point, even in their age, like a Shaquille O'Neal, to um, view women outside of the lens of consumption. Playboy literally offered to have me work for them. I declined it not even a week ago because it just doesn't align with my morals. And I just didn't see that as something that I should be doing. And I think that's why some of our traumatized sisters have taken a cynical posture to, you know, use him, abuse him, you know, run up a check, give, give, uh, he's got to cash at me before I have a conversation. I think we have perpetuated that vicious cycle of women being consumed. And then when we see women acting entitled, very bad behaved, we think it is independent of us. But a lot of times we create those women. In Nigeria, we say fear women. In America, I think the equivalent would be hell hath no fury as a woman scorned. And the reason we say that is because women, I think because they don't, they don't have the same physiological advantage that we have. You know, they, they don't have the bone density, they don't have the muscle mass, they don't have the size to just inflict, you know, brute force on us. They've had to become cunning. You know, they've, they've had to become more cerebral than, than men, especially in their attempts to retaliate. And I bring that up because a lot of people, especially in the manosphere, would have you believe that when you're a high value man, women are no better than your ability to consume them. But they don't talk about the risks. And obviously, STDs are a thing, you know, uh, babies are a thing, but the risks, the crazy bitches. And crazy at a level that most men could not fathom. Because again, women have had to be cerebral. Like I say, I say sometimes, you know, the worst thing a man could do is like kill you physically. Worst thing a woman could do is make you kill yourself. Now, we could talk about, you know, paternity fraud. <laughs> I think the number of female psychopaths, female sociopaths is underreported. And I think the reason why when you look at research around psychopathy, it seems like there's a, the, the numbers go towards men is because women are more, just baseline generally, more socially intelligent than men. And I'm saying that as a father of a daughter. Like girls are more socially intelligent more quickly than boys. So I think a female psychopath, female sociopath, would probably blend in a whole lot better and a whole lot easier than a male. And I, and I think that's, what, that's part of the reason why we do not know how to view women as predators. I understand like it was an overcorrection for a time when women weren't believed, when women were so, uh, sexually assaulted, women were taken advantage of and their cries weren't heard. And especially in our community, as a black community, you know, there, there was a lot of things in our families that get swept under the rug. And some of those things happen to little girls. Some of those things happen to little boys. I can't tell you how many women I've had conversations with that at some point in their youth, they were touched, they were molested, worse things happen. I think Believe All Women was a response to that. But I don't think we thought about some of the unintended consequences, particularly as it relates to black men, particularly as we are regarded the face of toxic masculinity, as we are regarded as the super predators. And in this case with Travis Rudolph and Dominique Jones, nobody thought to question her integrity, not even her brother. She must be blameless because she's a woman, or she must be the victim here. She says he hit her, he must have hit her. She says he did this, it must have happened. And even when the evidence comes out, it's still kind of, well, he should have, he should have, he should have. One of the pitfalls of masculinity is the fact that we are, in a lot of ways, defined by our ability to entertain and satisfy women. And that isn't just in the bedroom, right? The, the level of man that you are is your ability to keep her happy. And that's irrespective of her mental state. 
A lot of our women these days have been socialized to believe that men are unnecessary. So it even like, it compounds the thought that he's only as good as what he can do for me in the meantime and how he can serve me in a lot of ways. You know, I talked about um, the sister uh, mother goddess worship with Dr. Tia San Johnson, but there is a growing narcissism in women. So when we see women weaponize their men, their black men, when we see women use their men to cash checks that their mouths wrote, when we see women try to involve their men in altercations that he had nothing to do with, but now he's in a predicament where he's got to protect his woman. He's got to not look like a bitch. I'm reminded of the um, bodega worker who, who stabbed a young man after arguing with his girlfriend. His girlfriend sent him into the bodega to confront the clerk, and the boyfriend ends up being killed in the, uh, in the process. And just like we're seeing with Dominique Jones, she sicked the men in her life on Travis Rudolph. So unfortunately, fellas, you have to understand the pathology of the woman that is asking you to defend her honor. John Morant's mom called him to come confront some store clerk after she had an argument at a shoe store. She didn't think about what was potentially at stake, not just for him, but for her as well. But it's about that pride, it's about that ego, and I will sick my dog on you. Black men are not pit bulls. I know it's easier to deal with a dog because they need you. They're at your command. They don't require much from you other than the bare minimum. But black men are people. Black men don't just exist to serve the black woman. There's a symbiotic relationship. There's some reciprocity to be expected, to be demanded as well. In the case of Dominique Jones and her brothers, they should have taken a second, taken a beat to ask themselves, what type of woman is she? And brothers, we can't lose our lives or our freedoms behind a woman's just emotional vanity. One of the things that circulates in our community, we got this rumor that crazy women have the best vagina. And on the female side, hood dudes got the best penis. And for whatever reason, we think that these are good paradigms to circulate. And it's not until things like this happen that you ask yourself, was her vagina good enough for you potentially spending the rest of your life in prison or worse, dead? A lot of men in our community, unfortunately, have this fixation on unruly women. And some of us even tie our masculinity to our ability to tame unruly women. And it's a vicious cycle because the, the women also think, oh, if he's that dude, or if he's man enough, he'll be able to put me in my place. He'll be able to put me in check, whatever the case may be, without either side considering some of the consequences of that, you know, passionate, in the heat of the moment uh, uh, type of love. And unfortunately, again, when you tie it to the fact that a lot of us are not adept at identifying those red flags, we don't have that ability to discern, or we're so hungry for female validation or just racking up numbers or racking up notches on our belt that we end up in entanglements with women like Dominique Jones.